Hey traders, happy Monday. Welcome to the Weekly Outlook. This is Chris Fulmer here talking about all things stocks, forex, and cryptos. This is the week of June 1st through June 5th. Uh, I thought this is a pretty fitting picture considering how tense everything is right now, not only with the financial markets, uh, with the reopenings and business kind of returning to a new normal. Uh, just in fact, this, this weekend I was at a graduation party where it was parking lot only. Uh, all the graduates were in masks. People were supposed to stay in their car. Uh, obviously, not not normal, but here we are looking at the stock markets continuing to climb back. Uh, the major U.S. indices are down to only a single digit loss from the highs in February from the slide in March. Uh, but again, we've said this the last several weeks now, the stock markets are certainly not reflecting reality. So what is the reality? What are we looking to trade? Not to mention the political unrest, the civil unrest that's going on in the U.S. right now. We also have consumer spending that took one of the biggest hits on record. Uh, last Friday, we had news that came out on Friday from the uh, Senate report, and uh, consumer spending is down about 13.5%, uh, which is one of the largest single month drops ever. So needless to say, things are tight, things are tense, there's a lot of uncertainty, uh, and I think uh, you know people are on edge. And it's not just in the U.S., but it's also globally. So let's talk about some opportunities this week. Uh, the market seemed to be doing a great job of shrugging things off. Uh, so videos like this, you know, my, my weekly Outlook videos, my Keep It Seriously Simple video series, find me on all the social media outlets. Uh, Instagram, I actually post this video and some of my Keep It Seriously Simple videos that will be coming soon uh, on IGTV, which is Instagram. So at pulver.chris on Instagram. Uh, Twitter, you can find my handles going directly to my YouTube channel, at Pulver Chris. Facebook, YouTube, just type in my name. So uh, let's take a look this week. I did want to get to some charts. I want to get into some of my robot trading. So I have a robot right now that's been running. Uh, I've got some profit that I'm looking to manage this morning. In fact, all of my positions are currently in profit. So New Zealand US dollar in profit. It's a buy position. Euro pound is short. Uh, this should be position number one getting refilled. We had a, a profit on this one uh, and then waiting for a refill. And I just got the refill for the short. And now it's up some dollars. Uh, the New Zealand yen, same thing to the buy side as the yens continue to stay weaker. Look, I expect there to be a decent JPY strength move coming. Uh, but I told traders in my trading room, my flex trading room, look, we might as well not force trades on sell only. You know, the JPY, when the markets are moving, when risk appetite is abound, the yens continue to be very weak. So today I can look at the currency strength chart. We can see that the dollar, the Swiss, and the yen have all been weaker. So we've had some deployments running uh, with the dollar weaker. That's helped the New Zealand dollar rally. The Aussie dollar continues to rally. The yen being weaker, we've got our euro yen, New Zealand yen, Aussie yen, pound yen. The dollar cat, I want to take a quick look at that dollar cat, is back into a sell trade. Uh, we've been actually talking about this dollar cat for a while. I'm going to move this one over here. So dollar cat, put this back in alphabetical order. Now, there was an interesting development on the dollar cat because here's what we wanted to do. Uh, I expect there to be some pretty decent support around 38.50. And we held 38.50 for this little intermediate rally back up towards, no, this actually was the break below 38.50 back up towards it. And that was the, what you typically see here, the markets, they break support, they come back and retest that support becoming resistance. And that's actually helped us secure more downward trade. So again, the, a lot of these deployments were not directionally biased. Uh, they are using confirmation for my system. So I'm using a system called Right Trader Max and uh, it goes with the, fl the flow. So I'm looking at a 15 minute structure, 15 minute alignments uh, between the five minute and the 15 minute charts is taking trades, using trailing stop losses and also taking uh, different trade sizes. So if I have manual positions in, I can close them out with my robot and not have any uh, FIFO issues. But you can see here that uh, it's a nice little day to have some profits running and certainly some dollars running. And uh, more than likely by the end of today, or even uh, after I finish up this video, uh, I will likely end up taking some profit for the day. And what that has looked like over the last couple of weeks for us in the trading room has been this. So here's my trade log. Just for the last couple of weeks, we had a nice week last week. Uh, we took a huge position on the CAD Swiss, uh, not huge position, but we made a lot of pips on it. We made a lot of profit on it. This has been a position we got into in March. So we started to buy certain levels on the CAD Swiss, uh, a low volatility currency pair. A lot of this was brought on by the slide in the stock market, the risk off trading. So the Swiss got stronger, the oil slide as well. Uh, the CAD got extremely weak. We had a very aggressive downward move in March, but since the bottom, you know, end of March, early April to the recovery in oil back into the $30 area, uh, we're seeing the CAD resilient, we're seeing commodities stabilized, we're seeing risk off pairs like the Swiss, the yen, and the dollar retreat and be much, much weaker. So as we're heading into June trading, which again, arguably this is summer trading, uh, but we're looking for the market to establish some tops and bottoms and clearly we're not there yet. 
So Cad Swiss, we've had running since March. We had all these nice zero levels get filled and uh, ended up grabbing. This is this is pretty conservative. I, I generated more than 1,200 pips of profit, but for tracking trades and trades that I was in, you know, what did I do differently? All I did was add more trades. So I had 7,100 and then 7,050, and then 7,000, then 6,950, then 6,900, then 6,850. So I just added more trades in at different levels. Uh, but last week I decided it was important to take profit around that 7,050 level, which by the way, right now, as I'm looking at charts, uh, here is a glimpse at my live. Oops, let me drag this over here. So here's a glimpse at the dollar or the CAD Swiss right here, heading back up into this daily and weekly pocket. I said ultimately, if I could protect profit, it would be around 7,100 to 7,140. So last week at 7,050, I did close up on my profits on this trade and got it off the table. I also closed up on partial positions for the Euro Swiss, which is currently trading around 107. So we're going to have another nice chunk of profit this week on Euro Swiss from positions. And then with our little robot, this is the right Trader Max robot running between 15 minute charts and five minute charts. And we've just been consistently protecting profits throughout the day. So a day like this, where you're looking at my robots and I'm up some dollars and I'm up some pips, I'm going to take some profit. So this will probably be another anywhere from 30 to 50 pips like dollar cad right now. I'm up 114 pips. Awesome. How about the pound yen? Let's see what the pound yen's given me. Pound yen, I'm in, I'm up 109 pips. Awesome, right? Like those are much bigger than I expected. If I was micromanaging going after 30 to 50 pip trades, then I'd be closing them already. But you know, this is why I like to let profits run. This is why I have a stop loss in my robot. Uh, dollar cat is up 100 and some pips. Pound yen up 100 and some pips. Let's go to Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar. Uh, New Zealand dollar, if I put in my little break even indicator, let's go back up here. Uh, break even indicator. Should be right up in here at the top. There it is. So this is, see what I'm up pip-wise, I'm going to change the background. There we go. Uh, New Zealand US dollars up 75 pips. Awesome. How about the Euro Pound? Euro Pound, uh, change the color here as well. This average price size indicator is on there. So let me just change this to gray. And we're up some pips on this one as well. It finally turned over for us. This is up about 57 pips. So I'm going to start taking some profit. I mean, this 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 does exactly what I wanted it to do with 30 to 50 pips of profit. We're going to start protecting. This is what the last couple of weeks has looked like. Even if I don't take the CAD Swiss, which was a huge group trade and position trade for the last three months, this is some decent profit. You know, some decent profit here, 768 pips in the last two weeks using a robot. And all I'm doing is keeping an eye on things and making sure when my robot's in profit, I'm doing a pretty good job of actively protecting it. And then once I take the profit, I let the robot still run. So, you know, a lot of this was, you know, I don't want to force trades on yen pairs. If we don't see the stock market dropping, if we don't see the bears back in the markets, if we don't see a reason for the stock market to stop right now, whether it's connected to reality or not, or reflecting the economy or not, the JPYs are going to move. So decent alignment, stay with the direction. Currently, the flow is bullish, and it has been since April. So April, we established a bottom, and we've been bullish ever since, and it's still going. So I'm not going to sit here and tell traders to fight it. So we're going to trade it on smaller time frames, stay with the nimble alignments. If we take losses, they will be small. But it's days like this where I know I'm up 50 pips, I'm up 60 pips, I'm up 100 pips. I'm going to take those profits, and the only way my robot gets, gets back in is if it confirms. So I have to close out the trade. The robot will have to do this. It will actually have to. Let me bring up that VPS again. The robot's going to have to do the following. If I take profit, for example, on this trade, if I take profit right down here at a low, the robot will not do anything until price comes back into this blue ribbon and has to turn bearish again. Then it takes a sell trade. So it needs to confirm a bearish direction again with a stop loss up above. Now, if this all of a sudden forms a low and starts to go aggressively bullish, my robot will not take a trade. So I can take the profit along the way, let the robot still trade. If it does fill me again and go down to new lows, I will take another trade and I will make more profit. And I'll continue to actively monitor those positions. So, so far, this has fared pretty well. Uh, you know, grabbing some pips here the last couple of weeks, grabbing some group trades. You know, like I said, this week we'll probably have the Euro Swiss closing out for some profit as well. Uh, we've had some add on positions on this Euro Swiss. Let me find this one in this document. So, Euro Swiss, this is the big one right here. We've been in since, you know, 108, 107, 25, 106, 25, 105, 25, and then we had some add on positions later on, uh, which was based on a swing trade around 106, right in here. So 106.00, 106.50, I stack some orders up as well. Now, if we are, 
you know, currently price is at uh, 106.92. If we return to 107.25, 107.50, 10800, I'm going to take all of these trades and close profit. So between 107.50, 10800, uh, these are actually a lot of these are active now. This was optional for my traders simply because I'm like, look, I have group uh, group positions in. If you don't want to add more, if you don't want to take, you know, five trades, if you don't want to add another five trades, I understand. Uh, brokers also did some pretty funny business last week by increasing margins on Swiss franc pairs. This was now two weeks ago, um, which I did notice a big change. But because I have taken some partial profits on Euro Swiss and CAD Swiss, uh, I've taken that profit, regained a lot of my margin back. So I'm just going to keep nurturing this position and, and closing out everything around that 107.50 to 10800. So we should see another, I would imagine couple thousand pips to the upside on Euro Swiss, and then we can keep piecing together some trades. Like, I mean, today, if I close out on a lot of these pairs my robot has currently running, I'm probably looking at another 250 to 300 pips plus of profit. Uh, I will be totally happy protecting that and getting things jump started for this week. And then we'll settle in to start doing what I'm doing right now, which is the weekly outlook and let's find some good direction. But nothing has changed, right? That's kind of my point is we've, we've been sitting here kind of the same game plan, the same MO for the last two or three weeks, which is, don't fight the markets. Don't fight the trends. Don't call tops and bottoms. The market's still drifting. The market's still flowing. You know, right here, we're looking at the stock market last week on Friday. Uh, Friday may have been a little bit of a dip towards the end of the day. U.S.-China tensions are, again, escalating really high. Uh, futures market is flat for the day. U.S. markets, as of this morning, are open and positive. I was looking to see what last week's was. So let me go ahead and check out the SPY really quickly here. So we'll go into the SPY and take a look at last week's close. So we're in a level on the SPY that to me looks like a wedge is likely going to be the scenario. So we have this high to low from March. We have, uh, you know, last week was kind of Friday's close was by the dip. Uh, we have a massive gap right in here around 290. We're still drifting just above 300. Um, here's, and again, I, I keep mentioning all these big structural levels for the bears. The one thing we have to really be careful of is if this low gets taken out. So this is an April 20th low. We had another low and a dip. Let me see what that candle was right there. Uh, that is like the same low. Let me see what that candle was. So that was the daily candle from May 14th. So April 20th and May 14th, that price, let's look at the low there, 272. So let's just say that if we are keeping a level at 270, right in here, if the bears break below 270, uh, we are going to see a pretty swift decline. And that is where I think that the risk-off trading starts. So if we see the yens getting stronger, that's likely the case. If we break that level, the yen continues to push. Now, my question is everything that we've just created, you know, government central banks created these uh, immediate uh, liquidity, they, they responded to these liquidity concerns, they threw out these coronavirus packages, their stimulus that, again, it's temporary. A lot of the, you know, employment packages or a lot of the uh, the stimulus programs that are in, at least in the U.S., are going to be done uh, end of this month or into July. So when those benefits are gone, are people going to be willing to go back to work? Are, pe are people going to be wanting to go back to work? Look, you've had people that have been unemployed, claiming unemployment, and getting paid more money than if they were actually working a full-time job. So that's not really an incentive to go back to work, other than the fact that those benefits are going to run out and you don't want to be unemployed. Okay, but this has been a ridiculous recovery. Now, with this recovery, are we going to come back and retest the lows? Is that how bad things are going to get? And we're just going to return right back to where we started and there's nothing we can do? Or is this going to be, okay, we have a little dose of reality. We have the market sliding back into some of these important levels. Can we stall at these April 20 and May 14 lows? Can we stall here and actually see some indecision heading through summer months? That is quite possible. So this this is a little bit different structure than what I talked about the last couple of weeks in my trading room because I was under the impression, and this, this still might play out, but we had this high to low, lower high, which is around 70%, and we may have a drop into another 70%. So we have this high to low swing, pulls back 70%. Then we have a low to high swing that pulls back 70%. Then we have this high to low, pulls back 70%. And you can see what happens. This continues to create an indecision point and this indecision may last us through the summer once we get out of the summer it's all about the election so post-summer breakout i don't know what's going to happen you know of course if i had a crystal ball i could tell exactly what to do but i don't so i'm going to be prepared for this 
Meanwhile, I need to make sure that I'm catering to systems that can stay with current direction on nimble enough time frames to take some profit like I have with Right Trader Max. I need to be positioning myself for the next big move. And, and if this is the next big move, you can see that that's not really a big move. This is the next cycle that I might have to trade. And that might be trading range bound. So if I have range bound systems, like I have a strategy called the perfect storm, I have an equalizer, I have, I have systems that are set up and dedicated to currencies that are looking to range trade. In my stock portfolio, I'm just looking to stay patient. I'm waiting. If we have some of these March levels that get retested, I will buy at those levels. But for some, I had, I had chart alarms going off today. Uh, Under Armour is higher. Nike is higher. Royal Caribbean's is higher. Uh, some of my bank stocks are higher. Un, um, I'm trying to think what oh, Delta Airlines, Southwest. I mean, these companies that I've been wanting to buy at some of those lows, I just didn't really have the opportunity to get filled or I've already taken some profit. Uh, if I did buy some and I was up, you know, 25 to 45, almost 50% on some, I took that profit and I'm going to reinvest it at better prices. So I might miss out on some of this. I might miss out, miss out on some of this drifting. However, I think if I give this an extra three months or six months or 12 months even, uh, I have a feeling that I could be uh, very fortunate to have some great levels to buy from once again. Um, but I'm just not excited about, you know, putting fresh capital into, you know, yes, we had a kind of a one-off 20, 30, 40, 50 some percent correction, but I don't think that's it. Uh, and again, this is my opinion. So if you are fully a believer that that's the bottom in March and we're never going to see it again, or that these stock market bottoms or, or stock price bottoms, that individual stocks in March, if that's the lowest it's ever been and it's never going to come back to that level, then great. I hope you're buying a ton and you're making a ton of money. But I would say if that was me, I would be eager to protect my profit because I don't know if we can just call that the bottom and say we're never going to come back to it. Um, I would be really prepared for more indecision ahead, a lot of uncertainty ahead, uh, especially I, I don't think that we can discount the significance of the U.S. election this year. Now, I know that it's three, four, five months away. OK, I know that we might have. Uh, we might have coronavirus completely change how we vote. You know, we could have, there's there's a whole debate now on mail-in ba ballots and their validity. Um, but, I mean, honestly, who wants to turn out to a physical voting booth dressed in PPE? You know, or, or is it safe to do that? Are the workers that are there volunteering their time? Is it safe? It's like, we don't know this stuff. So to me, all this becomes a factor over the next three to five months. Right now, I'm just not fighting the flow. Right now, we have so much in the hope of vaccine race we have so much in the hope of the central banks and the recovery and you know powell i actually listened I, I was on the road last week on friday and i listened to powell for two hours my wife was bored out of her mind listening to bloomberg but i listened to jerome powell speak and and look i mean he, he's he is a pivotal part with how this country can recover yes it's through monetary policy yes it's through being accommodative yes it's for interest rates but the reality is there's only so much that you know, the, the U.S. can do from a systematic standpoint. At the end of the day, we are a consumer nation. People need to feel safe to go back to work. People need to be safe to go back into the workforce and return to, again, even if it's a new normal, something where they're they're working, they're contributing, they're getting a paycheck. Uh, because, again, what's benefit runs benefits of unemployment and what's happened for the last couple of months, once that is gone, uh, it's going to be different. So I'm just – basically, it all summarizes this. I am planning for the best, preparing for the worst. I'm trying to plan for what is right now to profit today, and I'm trying to plan ahead so I can profit tomorrow. Um, I'm not getting short-sighted and thinking like, this is it. This is exactly what I'm going to trade forevermore. It's like, I'm just trying to be really nimble and, and really ready for whatever comes next. And I'm preparing for a mix in volatility. I'm preparing for some uncertainty. Um, but that's why I also am watching the stock market. I'm watching cryptocurrencies, and I'm watching the Forex market. Because what I can actively trade in any environment is Forex. Uh, what I can continue to invest in long-term is Bitcoin and, and cryptos. And what I can continue to invest in long-term is the stock market. Uh, I have had some much shorter-term plays in the stock market because these recoveries have been amazing. Uh, if you look at like uh, Delta Airlines, for example, which was a great buy trade that we've talked about. We've talked about Delta. We've talked about Southwest Airlines. We've talked about some of these big levels on these companies that would be amazing to buy. Okay, look, the buy opportunity was right here at 20 bucks. So if you're getting a $6 move out of a $20 stock, that's decent, right? I mean, you're looking at 30%. Now you can take that 30% and you can stash it away. You can take that 30% of returns and you can buy it again at a later point. You can buy it at that price or possibly lower and hold it more long term. But I, I mean, I, I just think, look, this is a great little pop. You have virtually no risk on these trades. 
right? You get in, you get filled, you get 30% of your money right away. I'm going to take that profit and then reinvest it again at the same level. So Southwest is like this to me. Uh, Delta Airlines is like that to me. Royal Caribbean is like that to me. Uh, a lot of bank stocks that did First Horizon National the last couple of weeks. Uh, Goodyear Tires had a good run as well. We've just had some really good short-term plays in the last couple of months. Now, what's interesting is this stock does not look like the SPY, you know, which we've had a you know 35% drop and a huge recovery to the to the fact that we're only within like single digits of our drop from February highs. But not all stocks look like that. Okay, Amazon's at new highs, I understand. Netflix is at new highs, I understand. Microsoft, Facebook, they're all near or ha at highs. But I'm not buying at those highs, okay? So there are just levels that I want to wait for. There are prices I want to wait for. Um, there are directions I'm looking for. There are ways that I would like to play the VIX in the not-too-distant future. Uh, the VIXI, for example, the VIX, the fear gauge. I mean, I, I think we can see a, a, a rallied move in the VIX again, just like we saw back in March when we rallied from $12 to $85. So Forex, I'm going to be active. Stocks, I'm going to be patient. Cryptos, I'm going to be patient. That's my plan. Okay, so what do we have going on right now? Let's talk Aussie pairs. Okay, Aussie is still strong. Here is the currency strength chart for the day. Let me go ahead and refresh this while we're in the video now. So at the time of this, it's uh, 12 noon Eastern time on the 1st of June. Uh, Aussie is our strongest currency pair. CAD and New Zealand, again, commodities and risk appetite pairs, even the pound. You can lump all these in together for risk on. You lump these together for risk off. Now, what's interesting is you're seeing that the euro and the Swiss are, again, kind of back in lockstep. Last week, we had a really nice separation. The euro was one of the strongest of the day, and the Swiss was one of the weakest. That day, I decided to take some partial profits on that euro Swiss. We're right back up towards the highs around 10700. We had some pretty heavy profit taking around 10725 last week on the euro Swiss. Uh, but this is what this is kind of the poster child for risk on versus risk off. So Aussie, New Zealand, CAD doing very well. All three commodity-based currency pairs. The pound is also a very risk-appetite-oriented currency pair. Risk off. Your yen, your dollar, your Swiss. And your euro being lumped into that as well. So it just is a good reflection of what the market's doing right now, what the market is thinking right now. There's just not a major catalyst to make this change direction. So outside of a Friday profit-taking, no direction has really shifted. We're looking at major directions on the daily. It's the same. The four-hour, the eight-hour, it's the same. You know, we're getting down into those levels on the 30-minute, the 50-minute. Maybe we're seeing some some hesitation to go any higher or lower. But, again, why fight it? If we have a chance to protect some profits in those short spurts of 30 to 50 pips, let's do it. Let's protect it. Let's be active. And let's see if we get some transitions. If we start changing zones from buy zones to sell zones, great. But protect your profits along the way because if it stays in a buy zone, we might as well stay with it. If it then converts to a sell zone, then we can start following new alignments. But until that happens, I'm going to continue to trade more short term and be actively positioned for that. So the Aussie CAD, I still like this trade. You know, 9200, 9220, we're currently sitting there. Uh, what I love about this currency pair right now is we have a strong disagreement between price and momentum. So we have price making new highs, momentum absolutely not following that. Now, if this gets up into over bought territory, which is not that far away, uh, this is definitely going to be a near-term sell trade. So I'm still holding 9180 as a sell, 9100 as a sell, and I'm trying to get this pair. I might make more of a conservative profit level. You know, we talked about 8850 for profit. Uh, I might be more conservative now and look at something like 9000. If we hit 9000 and grab, you know, 300 pips out of this trade, I'll be fine with that. And we can go find another trade. But we still have channel resistance ahead. We have divergence. So all these things are looking pretty decent. I just need a bit more confirmation out of that Aussie cat as we start a new month. Uh, by the way, we are going to have new weekly targets this week. We're going to have new monthly targets for a new month. Uh, we have non-farm payroll this week. Take a look at the major impact news. Uh, this was that Friday consumer senate report as well as the personal spending uh one of the largest dips in personal spending on record uh, and then we also see just a big drop in consumer sentiment you go into this week's trading for high impact only uh we had a euro holiday today it was uh whit monday okay uh major news we have cash rate decision for the aussie that's going to be tuesday night at 1 30 a.m so that's going to be tuesday's trading day rba is expecting to hold rates at 0.25 percent uh, Aussie GDP coming out quarterly G GDP uh, again forecasted quite a bit lower uh, from the last I mean several quarters here 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.5 we're forecasting a negative 0.4 percent so a pretty significant contraction there in GDP uh, CAD bank rate decision so we have BOC Bank of Canada you've got the rate expected to stay the same again at 0.25 percent 
you have uh, what I'm not seeing on here is the BOC press conference, which generally is between uh, 11 and 11:15 a.m. after that BOC rate decision. So uh, we'll be watching this on Wednesday to see if the CAD gives us any you know aggressive movement at 10 a.m. Uh, but I'll be watching the CAD overall. Uh, we have Aussie trade balance at night. Man, we have <laughs> we have three rate decisions this week plus non-farm payroll. So we have Aussie rate decision, CAD rate decision, we have ECB rate decision, and ECB press conference at 8.30. Uh, again, none of these are expected to change rates. I don't think there's going to be any surprise from the actual rate decision, but it's going to be important what the central banks say. So reading the statement, following what the, the press conference says for the ECB, same thing for the statements from the RBA and BOC. And then Friday, I'll be running a uh, bonus session for a non-farm payroll plus CAD news. We have uh, employment for the CAD. We have employment for the dollar. You can see here that we're looking at our unemployment rate to go up again, uh, significantly higher from last month. We were at 14.7, which was a huge jump, obviously, with coronavirus. We're looking at 19.5. We're looking at a 20 million. That was from last, uh, last month's non-farm to now a drop in 8 million. Uh, with an average hourly earnings of way less. So the stimulus is looking to run out. Uh, people are going to be making less. People are going to be high, you know, higher unemployment rate. So I just, again, the stock market price action is not necessarily indicative or reflective of the economy. None of these things for this week or the last couple of weeks have news are showing any positive outcomes. Now, whether or not, you know, maybe the argument is that now these are, well, this is just because of coronavirus and this is what the data shows because of coronavirus. Well, okay, fine. But stimulus checks are running out in the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, unemployment's probably going to be staggeringly high or floating higher. Um, and we have to figure out what our new normal looks like. We have to figure out if kids go back to school in the next three months. You know, schools are going to be out of session. K through 12 homeschooling is going to take a breather for once. Uh, will daycares open back up for the summer as, as people go back to work? Will they not? What about K through 12 in the fall? We don't know. What about major colleges in the fall? We don't know. So it's just, there's a lot of stuff that's like, I just think this is a good example right here of what it feels like. We're right there. Like this doesn't take much to break. And maybe it's August. Maybe it's the election, you know, so it's plan for the best, prepare for the worst. It's be battle tested. Make sure that there's nothing right now in your portfolio, in stocks, in cryptos, in Forex, whatever you're trading, whatever financial instruments you're in, make sure that you can survive whatever comes next. And if it's survive on savings, if it's survive on, you know, not taking positions and not over trading, if it's not trying to, you know, be margin called, it's like treat your capital accordingly. It's, it's really important that you have it for the next three months, six months, 12 months. I mean, if you can weather this storm and you can come out of this year with some gains, and again, I, I hope that you can come out very positive. You know, we're looking to do that with, with the trading room and making some good sound decisions. But if we can come out of this ahead, I mean, that's that's not the forced dip that everyone else is going to be faced with, right? I mean, imagine your retirement account has taken a 15 to 30% decline or has experienced a decline. You know, you have to now make up 40 to 50% in gains just to get back to where you started. That's a big advantage to someone that can just find a way to produce consistent profits year over year. That's a huge difference. So this is what it feels like. But rather than being, you know, dark cloud and gloomy and everything's going to come apart, it's like, look, we might we might hang on to this. All this tension, all this uncertainty might still find a way to just get through it. We might find a way to get through it and come out on the top. But again, we're still taking it uh, very tactically for trading right now. All right, so I'm very much trading uh, in the now. That's that's my plan. All right, so anyway, Aussie pair is doing well. Here's Aussie Swiss heading back into some major support, becoming a resistance. I would be very aggressive on protecting any bullish profits on Aussie Swiss. The good thing is that we didn't make any you know fake out lows. We had higher low, higher low, higher low, drifting higher. This is a great spot for profit taking between 65 and 6600. So make sure you're moving those stop losses and trapping those profits. Uh, because we have a new week, because we have a new month, do not be surprised to see some aggressive profit taking and then we spend the month declining. Uh, it would make perfect sense after this nice recovery for the last three months, all of April, all of May, into the first part of June. And then we start finding some balance into June. So I'm looking for some Aussie weakness. Uh, again, without confirmation, I'm not going to force trades, but I think we'll get it. Aussie yen, you're going to see the same thing. Aussie yen continues to drift higher. We've got a rising wedge. It's starting to push higher. Look at the disagreement, right? We're, if we're getting into overbought territory, we're starting to see that noticeable disagreement. We've made several higher highs here, but we're pushing back into past support. We're pushing back into past support. Look, all that's fine.
So don't fight it. You know, I mean, I've got a big, bold 4,000 pip prediction on the JPY pairs, but it gets even better. I was looking at this level coming back down to the lows. If we get it up even higher and we have that level come back down to the lows, we might add an extra three to 400 pips to this Aussie yen. And the same thing on other currency pairs. We might have much better spots to sell from. However, I'm not selling without confirmation. So this is a buy trade for now. Protect your profits aggressively. And if it turns bearish, then we sell it. Okay, Aussie New Zealand, we're back up towards the highs again around 107, uh, 107.50 to 10800. So what am I looking for? Well, disagreement at the tops. We're entering into, again, nearly overbought conditions. Do we drop back down to 105? I would love to see 105 to 103. I'm not a seller on this currency pair. I had traders in, in this trade at 108.25, which was pretty much at the top. Okay, and we took that down for, uh, this should have been around 10650, 10700. If traders protected some profit there, great. If they didn't, they should have been stopped out at possibly break even or so. All right, but no risk on this trade. I'm not a buyer, I'm not a seller. I'm a buyer lower. I'm a seller not right now. I don't want to sell it. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to see if we can get this Aussie to cooperate and come down and give me a chance to buy it at a lower price. Aussie dollar. Looks just like the other Aussie pairs. Keeps going higher. Look at this channel. Keeps going higher. Major support becoming resistance right now. Like any time, you know, I mean, 60, this level here, 6650, 6700. That's exactly what I put on the charts. I've had this on my charts for now like a month. We're, we're there. You know, we're at 60, almost 6800. Okay, so it drifted a little bit higher. I wasn't calling the top. I was just saying, get ready, right? So if we have heavy profit taking this week, if we have a breakout coming in the next couple of weeks, then we have the trade in the direction still working. Just how we wanted it to, just a little bit delayed. But the current flow is up. Stay with it. It's an aggressive candle, but we have new targets below weekly, monthly, all there ripe for the picking to get hit in the month of June. Um, so just protect your profits. CAD pairs. CAD Swiss. I'm going to move through these kind of in baskets because we have some major news this week. Remember, RBA rate decision on Tuesday. It's, it's a Tuesday during the uh, it's late Asia session, uh, right before the Frankfurt Open, right before the London Open. It's 1.30 a.m. rate decision for the RBA expected to say the same. The BOC is on Wednesday. That's the Bank of Canada. The ECB, the European Central Bank, is on Thursday and non-farm payroll on Friday. So it is actually a heavy dose of high impact news this week. Uh, those could all provide some really nice volatility, and I expect there to be plenty of movement this week. Uh, CAD Swiss, we're back up towards 7070. Look at 7100 to 7140, trapping and protecting those profits. Move those stop losses in. Uh, I protected a lot of these profits last week at 7050, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with getting out of it. I, I made, I mean, I had, I think, uh, I, I don't even know. I think I had 14 or 15 positions running on this one, and I had like 22 positions on the uh, the Euro Swiss. So I've definitely booked some pretty decent profits on CAD Swiss and Euro Swiss, and still looking to do that. But if you're still in CAD Swiss, get your get your profits protected. You know, 7100, 7140, nice little inefficiency there on the daily and the weekly. Uh, CAD Yen still pushing higher. Look at these levels. Okay, look at these levels. I, I'm not here calling the top. I'm saying get ready for it. We have some resistance. If it confirmed bearish, we'd be selling, but it's not. So we're buying right now as it stays bullish. We're probably coming back into these la last levels of support, right? Past support, past support, breaks down. That could be touched right there around 7,900 to 8,000, which is what I have for your major resistance. And if we have that, look for that profit taking. Look for some confirmation on the shorter time frames to go bearish and see if this wants to come back down for a decent wave lower. Okay. So that would be CAD yen. But again, stay with the current alignments. Uh, CAD yen, let's go euro, actually Swiss yen, uh, which is going to be a bit of a mix because it's safe haven versus safe haven. So I'm staying out of that one. Uh, euro Aussie continues to push lower. Not by much, you know, fractionally lower lows. Once this trend line breaks, just look at this. Once this trend line breaks, this will be a buy trade. So we, I mean, we might literally come back all the way and reset. This Euro Aussie could come all the way back down to these range lows at 6,100, and then we start going back up from there. We might look at a range trade. Look, it was in a range from 6,100 to 6,800 for months. We might do the exact same thing. Come down to 61, find support, go to 68. Sell it at 68, back down to 61. We might have some range bound trading coming on the Euro Aussie, but right now the alignment is bearish. So stay with the short term alignments. Today is a very strong bearish candle, and we wait. You sell it right now in the in the short term. You take your profits, protect your profits. But once we confirm bullish, I would expect 61 to be strong, strong support. EuroCAD should be heading down towards 1.50. It is. If CAD Swiss goes up, EuroCAD goes down. Look for 1.50. Euro Swiss, we're hanging out right around 107. Okay. 
10700 we're currently at 10695 we had a high last week on friday at 10724 uh, i did take some profits around partial positions i'm looking to get back in if we get a dip at all uh, a lot of this goes back to my right trader setup on the daily chart i have all these add-on trades i'm trying to get this back to previous lows around 108 so any dip, any fall, 107.50 to 108.00, protect all those profits, and we'll reassess this trade. Uh, Euro pound is nicely bearish, taking some profit on this one, and looking for more. This one should be setting up a decent topping pattern. A slightly higher high in price, nice disagreement. If this comes down, makes a crown, and heads lower, what a great spot for us to be taking profit at 87, and possibly down into these larger pockets around 85. So I do like short on the Euro pound. Uh, if I take profit on it today and I let the robot still run, I hope the robot can pick up more profits for me. Euro yen, still pushing bullish, but again, I think resistance is ahead. Euro New Zealand, heading lower. And I know I'm moving really quickly here, but for the sake of time, I want to get this video out to you as soon as possible. Uh, Euro New Zealand, a lot of range bound trading, major support around the lows at 77 to 7,600. Uh, probably going to be some summer trading between 77 and upwards of 82-ish. So there's probably some more range conditions on that one we'll look for. The Euro dollar had an interesting break last week above 1.10. Now, here's my take on the Euro dollar. Okay, this is a really important spot. If we come back in to test 110 and we bounce off of 110, this is going higher. This has been the breakout we've been waiting for, which is why I've been a little reluctant to just be all committed to range bound trading. Now, yes, my range bound robots have been doing very well, but now that we're above this area, I'm not trying to hold range trades. This might be the breakout to the upside that goes back to 115, 116. You know, there's a lot of reasons right now that the dollar could be weaker. We have weaker spending. We have higher unemployment. We have a ton of civil unrest right now in the U.S. So we might see a little run against the dollar. And this goes back to the U.S. dollar chart, the DXY chart. There are decent levels uh, for the dollar to drop and continue to fall. So as a reflection of that, the euro dollar is breaking higher. And I wouldn't be surprised if this continues to drift back up towards 114 and 115. Pound pairs, even though you're seeing risk on uh, the pound Aussie, it's all about the Aussie being the stronger currency pair. So pound Aussie continues to trend lower and traders are continuing to stay in the short term direction, in the near term direction, and just continue to hammer the profits on the pound Aussie, uh, which is amazing. And so this has been just this amazing channel break, pullback and dropping like, I mean, we have dropped from the equal highs at 2.07 to lows. That, I mean, this is amazing. This is like 2,400 pips. Yeah, 23, 2400 pips on the pound Aussie. And essentially, other than this little 500 pip recovery at the end of April, this thing has been all bearish since the top in early April. So what an amazing run and trend on the pound Aussie. Um, and it really just looks like the inverse of all the other Aussie pairs. You know, we've got Aussie CAD higher, Aussie Swiss higher, Aussie Yen higher, Aussie New Zealand higher, Aussie dollar higher. Your Aussie pound Aussie have been lower, but a steady, steady trend on that pound Aussie. So stay with it until it trades, until or until it changes. Uh, pound CAD, I've, I've said here for the last couple of weeks, as long as we remain below 72, I'm a seller. So looking to sell the pound CAD, taking profit at lows. Hopefully, we end up getting back down towards 6,600. Uh, if we can see the bears push down to 66, I would then be looking for buy opportunities in the near term uh, off of that level. I think this will also prov uh, provide some range trades. 66 bounces back up towards 72. Uh, if we continue to unwind, I don't think we're going to have that solid of a trend on this pair. But if we do unwind, you know, sure, I can keep selling in the near term. Look for some logical support and bottoming movements and then take it back up higher later. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm bearish below 7,200. Uh, pound Swiss, I'm going to leave this one alone. Uh, this one is heading higher, just like the pound yen, but uh, not as convincing. So we have a trend line break around the right hand side of this. I'm more of a kind of, you know, committed buyer on the right side of this larger trend line. I think this creates a little bit more noise on the pound Swiss. So I'm not as excited about that area. But if we get on the right hand side of this, then I'm more looking for the uh, the upside to continue and have some sustained bullishness. Pound yen. We played around with some levels on the pound yen, uh, 13200. And once we got back above that, this became another catalyst to the upside. So we're back up towards previous highs in April, uh, retesting some of these highs around 135. Uh, we have some price gaps. We have a big pocket. I'm not sure about this one. Uh, this, again, is good for the short term, but nothing more than that. Like we might hit some equal highs here, have some range bound levels on pound yen. Uh, I, I suppose we could continue to drift higher, which I'll just let the robot do a lot of the heavy lifting on that trade. Uh, I just, on the yen pairs, I just try to do my best not to fight them. You know, if the yen's going to move, I want to be able to capture pips, but it drives me crazy to call, you know, here's what I like to do. I like to buy low and sell high. If I'm in the middle of a movement, 
you know, I'm going to let a robot do that trading for me. Because for me to just jump in and trend trade and continue trade, I know that I'm not buying the best spot. I know I'm not selling the best spot. So a robot does a much better job on those continuation trades than I do. And if the robot happens to continue to buy and price happens to continue to go higher, then I am, am profiting from that. So the robot just letting it exist and letting it trade for me and all I'm doing is monitoring my stops and my take profits and protecting it actively, the robot does a much better job of, uh, than I do. So I will admit it and I'll take it and I'll let the robot win for me. But I'll be I'll be monitoring it as always. Pound New Zealand, Pound New Zealand heading back down. I think there's some major support that should be building here around 1.98. So I'm interested in a buy opportunity on this Pound New Zealand. Uh, in fact, this week, we might talk about it tomorrow in my trading room. We're going to be looking for some really good signs to the upside. If there's a strong level of disagreement, which we're not quite there yet on the daily chart, uh, we're not quite there either on the oversold condition. However, I like the structure, I like the structure. I think this is a logical spot either here or here for the bulls to then start showing up. So I think Pound New Zealand is setting up for a decent move to the upside sooner than later, uh, but we might not see it this week. Okay. But uh, again, we'll get ready for it. We'll be ready. Pound dollar, decent run against the dollar. The pound dollar has recovered back above 2250. I said if we are below 2250, we're bearish. If we're above it, we're bullish. And here we are trading at 2466. So we broke back above, pulled back, and we were long on the pound dollar for that reason. So pound dollar looks good as long as we stay above 2250. This is probably going to come back and retest the highs at 2600. Okay, New Zealand CAD. Uh, sideways, I'm going to let the robot still trade on this one for the range conditions. New Zealand Swiss, I would love to see price get up to 6,200. Let's go, New Zealand Swiss. You can do it. New Zealand Yen, same thing. Looking for some resistance here. This yellow box is around 68 to 6,900. Uh, we're going higher, probably going to head into some major support becoming a resistance. So stay with the current direction, stay with the short-term alignments, and we'll look to sell it at a better price with confirmation. But it's not there yet. New Zealand dollar. If we stay above 62, which we are, we're, de we're nearly up to 6,300. I'm going to stay with this. There's a lot of upside movement that can still recover. The Aussie dollar has recovered quite a bit. The New Zealand is still kind of the lagging recover. So I could see the New Zealand dollar continuing a little bit higher towards 63, 64. That'd be great. Uh, we still have non-farm this week. We don't have an RBNZ this week. So it's all about Aussie and CAD and Euro and dollar later in the week. But I want to see where this uh, New Zealand dollar heads uh, as we start out on a great note. But can we sustain this push above 62? If this week, by the end of the week, this is important. If the weekly candle closes above 6,200, that's a good thing because I think we'll stay sustained to like to like 64, 6,500 on the New Zealand dollar. Okay, dollar CAD continues to head lower. So we are coming back into this large daily weekly pocket around 3,500, 3,550. So we are bearish for that. This is going to be another reason why we are protecting those profits in here. We expect this to get hit. It's probably going to past resistance become support between 35 and 3,400. Trap those profits because we're likely going to bounce from there. Okay, dollar Swiss, leave it alone. Uh, dollar yen, leaving that one alone. Uh, cryptos, let's take a quick look at Bitcoin and then I got to go. So I'll let you all go here in a moment. Bitcoin is at 9,500 going sideways. I look at this as a little bit of a hesitation. As long as we maintain a bullish posture above 8,150, I'm still a buyer. Uh, the next move would be something like this, maybe a little bit of a break. If we have indecision, 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 something like this, and we just have another surge to the upside, let's go. This could be the structure here with a head and shoulders pattern. You know, have some indecision, have some consolidation, then the break is to the upside. Uh, what an amazing run we could have in Bitcoin by the end of the year if somehow the presidential election is a big fuel that uh, can compel this to go up above 10,000 and start making a run towards that 20,000 mark from 2017. So anyway, that's it, traders. Um, if you're liking this video and others, make sure that you like, subscribe. I really appreciate when everyone takes the link and copies the link and shares it with uh, friends, peers, people that are interested in trading, people that you know could benefit from this trading information. Look, it's free, right? My Keep It Seriously Simple video series, it's free. My YouTube channel, it's free. So I will continue to deliver this content. Just make sure that you like it, share it, uh, spread the wealth, spread the love, spread the education. I appreciate it. And uh, let's have a great week trading. It's going to be an exciting week. We have a ton of news. But uh, if you're in my trading room, which, by the way, you can join me, so type in smarttrader.com. Go into the marketplace. Check out the Flex trading room. You can join me for a month. You can trial it. Um, 
And look, I mean, we're going to have sessions on this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We're going to throw in a bonus session on Friday. So you can get a nice, you know, concentrated dose of what it's like to be in a trading room every single day, trading different instruments and uh, doing what we can to find some good investments and take some profits. So that's what the plan is, traders. We've had a great couple of weeks looking for some more. Today's going to be a day that I'm looking to protect some profits. So I'm going to do that today. Look forward to seeing you all this week in the trading room. Talk to you soon, everybody. Bye-bye.